Recode This. Hey guys, Davison here for Recode This. Welcome to the 2014 Mega Edit. What's the 2014 Mega Edit? Other than shit you put out this year, Davison? Well, it's a mega edit, so a super long edit of my 10 best videos, or our 10 best videos of 2014. So cheers to that. I'm gonna drink some wine. Get me in the uh, video review spirit. No, I don't always drink when I review videos, though lately I've felt like it. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each video and then I'm going to talk about one of the comments that was left on that specific video. So enjoy this. Uh, I think that all YouTubers should do this because people who come to your channel later in its development don't always see the best stuff that you've made and there's always this constant stream of stuff coming out so I thought this is a way of like if you want to sit down and truly experience Regoat this uh, make sure you have alcohol and uh, you will have the opportunity with something of this length so the first video it's the origins of our Regoat this intro or extra so that's when it goes Regoat this right sometimes it's too loud i admit that but the reason why that meh sound uh exists is because of our first ever video which was a parody of jimmy fallon's ew i find jimmy fallon's ew to be really juvenile and obnoxious but a lot of people love it and i guess there's a lot of stupid people out there so we just okay we just thought well we watched this ew segment and it's like let's do our own ew because everything about this channel is about producing trending media as quickly as possible, but yet still being what we hope to be entertaining or provocative. So, eh, watch the video. I'm sorry, this is the, such an obnoxious way to begin this. Hi, my name is Sarah, and this is Ew. For those of you who don't know, my name is spelled S-A-R-A, not So the best comment was from Tarcucciolo and he said, this was perfect, better than Jimmy Fallon and nearly Zac Efron. I see great things in the future of this channel. And then someone called PKenny16 responded, you're high, but with the typical internet hater your, which it should have been Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, but instead you put your Y-O-U-R high. But that's kind of perfectly what we want Regoat this to be about that some people are gonna love us and understand what we're doing and how we're being playful or provocative and other people are gonna be like this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> so welcome to the bullshit that is Regoat this. So on to our next video. Hey there, my name is Jonathan, this is Davison, and welcome to Regoat This. Today is Challenge Fridays, which probably means we should do a challenge. We are gonna do a challenge. We're gonna do the Cool Whip, but today is the Whipped Cream Challenge, and Jonathan has no idea what we're gonna do. Jenna Marbles did this on her channel. You're gonna fill that bowl with whipped cream. Okay. And then you're gonna take this spoon. No, you're not gonna do that. You are going to try to whip it into my mouth, and I'm gonna try to catch it and then spit it into this glass until the glass is full. So we're gonna see how long this takes us. Okay. So you ready to spray the whipped cream? This is a yeah. fun Friday. This is like my dream. Yeah. Oh my god, this is such a mess. Is this enough? Okay, I think this is good. I think we're good. Never enough whipped cream. Nope, okay, what are you yep. talking about? Yep, doing those cracks there. 
Fill in the cracks. That's what he said. This is best ball. That's all. That's all. Aww. Oh. Uh, uh. You should make my hair flow. <laughs> just like, uh, no, no, no. You can't pull Pocahontas in there. <laughs> Pocahontas, I was going for Brooke Shields. Okay, so are we ready, Jonathan? So you gotta get the spoon, okay. you gotta whip it. You so gotta throw this at you, who cares? I have to catch it and spit it in the, uh, without hitting everything on my shop. So I, I yeah. throw this at you? Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, fire. <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> facial, Jonathan, facial! Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm so <just literally scoring. laughs> Okay, I'll try it closer next time. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> this is why I don't do sports. <laughs> oh my god, you look great. Let, wait, wait, wait. Let, let's, let's take a selfie together. Okay, okay. 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 What's this? Oh, looks, looks like some other people are doing this too. <laughs> Perfect! Go. Oh, this is so gross. This is like spit it, spitting after. Spit okay. fast. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Haven't spat this much since a couple weeks ago. Oh. 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 Maybe if you use your tongue to like get the stuff around, it, I, there's not much left. Wait, how about I gently lob it? No, like, like, okay. Like, like, ah! Oh, there! That was oh, one of the more successful it. ones! Okay, oh! Uh, <laughs> so, we failed the challenge! Jonathan, what Well, I think we, we definitely get points for trying. <laughs> but I feel like I won. Do you feel like you won? <laughs> so what are we supposed to do with the glass of whipped cream? Are we supposed I to... I don't know! I think I'm supposed to eat it. This is gonna provoke this challenge Friday. Ew. <laughs> Rico, this. I saw Jenna Marbles do this on her channel with her amazing boyfriend, Julian Salamita. I love him so much. He's just such a nice man. Him and Jenna go like perfectly together. And if I had a relationship goal, it would be to find my own Julian who does videos with me and yet we also have a romantic relationship because spoiler me and Jonathan we love each other but we ain't boyfriend and girlfriend okay Jonathan has a boyfriend so that's why I wanted to do the challenge so that I could experience that kind of fun the fun that they communicate in the video and I think Jonathan and I did have a lot of fun doing this uh, but the aftermath of this was that I ended up getting super sick. I got a throat infection and a sinus infection, and I swear to God, it's because I got whipped cream up my nose. And because it's so oily, right? I don't think it came out for months. So I don't recommend doing the Cool Whip Challenge and having Cool Whip thrown at your face unless you are whipped cream, whatever. Uh, unless you are comfortable with potentially getting a sinus infection. Isn't that gross? So the comment I'm going to read is from Vogue. Never get in front of a camera again, as if our Cool Whip Challenge was so offensive that nobody should ever want to watch it and we were called attention whores. Mind you, what I had done, which is often my strategy, is I submitted the video to Reddit's Cringe, which you actually can't do anymore. They now have an anti-YouTuber rule on Reddit's Cringe subreddit, so... Oh well, can't submit uh, YouTubers doing stuff in front of the camera, but I knew that they would think it was cringy and weird. So, mission accomplished, the video got 4,000 views. And people calling YouTubers attention whores, it, it's so stupid because we're entertainers and they're watching us and they're obviously being entertained, so I don't know why they care whether or not we're getting any attention if they just watched us. And if anything, we provided an outlet for their hate, so whatever haters, whatever Vogie and all you people who get so mad. Next video! Can you imagine what this does when it's inside your body? The amount of damage when you drink orange juice, this is what you're doing to your stomach! Hello, this is Rigothis and my name is Davison. I'm Jonathan. And we're about to debunk the crazy Russian hackers. What happens when you boil coke? So we're about to boil some orange juice, which we figure is probably the most innocuous thing we can find other than water and uh, we just want to kind of see what will happen, you know? 
To be clear though, that the, the crazy Russian hackers experiment would not work with water because what matters is the sugar content. And I want to prove that any liquid with a high sugar content will turn brown and then black if you reduce it for long enough. Essentially, he just made a Coca-Cola reduction and then burnt it. Of course, it's going to be black, thick, and disgusting. So we're going to make this black, thick, and disgusting, okay, like wait. my soul. Okay, opening the orange juice. We're putting the orange juice into the pot. Oh, this is some crazy science, man. Okay. Now, we are turning on the stove. What happens when you boil orange Why juice? Why is it? Now we wait. It smells disgusting. <laughs> I think it smells really good. It's like a nice uh, floor cleaner scent right there. <laughs> Notes of bergamot, clementine, citrus. A brilliant scent. <laughs> Cleanses the palate. Like a good Riesling. Okay, and your sciences. Okay, I just blew Jonathan's mind because he didn't know that Dolce de Leche existed. Why would you boil milk for that much time? I What? Because it turns into caramel. Because milk contains sugar. And anything that contains sugar that you boil for long enough turns brown and caramelizes. And then after that, it freaking burns. So I have to introduce you to Dolce de Leche. So if we hit 10,000 views, Dude, we're gonna make some dolce de leche. I'll let you spread it all over me. Ooh, yeah. Mm, don't you want some of that in your mouth? That's what she said. Oh my God. Where? Oh, do we still have any liquid left? Actually, now know. it's smelling good. Now it's smelling more like sugar. So that means we're getting closer to the point where it's going to start to really caramelize. The citrus smell is gone. Now we're left with notes of caramel. <laughs> sort of musky. It's definitely caramel at this point. It looks like caramel. If it looks like caramel, it is caramelized. Yay, that's what uh, the term still... comes from. Caramelized to turn into a caramel color and to turn into the caramel flavor. I didn't say this before, but even if you're a hipster, don't try this at home. It's very dangerous. Sugar boils at a temperature much higher than water. You could burn yourself. Don't do this at home. Leave it to us, the professional hipsters. Now you can see it is a very dark brown. It's starting to look like chocolate and it is burning to the sides of the pot. It's even burning to the bottom. It's burning to the bottom. It's going to get black. Can you imagine what this does when it's inside your body? The amount of damage. When you drink orange juice, this is what you're doing to your stomach. Okay, you clearly see how dark and black and disgusting this is. We could keep going, it's already smoking. We have proven our point to the crazy Russian hacker. You can even turn orange juice into black tarry nonsense. So everybody needs to stop being paranoid about drinking Coke. And that is what happens when you boil orange juice. This has been Rigothis, this is Jonathan. Hey. My name is Davison, and don't forget to like, subscribe to us, and regote this! As well, we are hosting a web video conference in Toronto called ViralCon that you might want to come to. Check it out, ViralCon.com. 2014, I think, is the year that YouTube started to be considered mainstream, and because of all the blogs that would embed YouTube videos and then you know, best Facebook's algorithm, so those posts would rise to the top and then be reshared, this boiling coke uh, video did extremely well. Now things are changing again and Facebook now wants to dominate the video market. So it, it's not as effective to be embedded and shared as it used to be. But anyhow, this video became popular because of that, the boiling coke. So we wanted to dispel the myth that, oh, boiling coke and turning it into a tarry black mess is something horrible, you know, or, or shocking because it's natural. Whenever there's sugar in any liquid, you can boil it down and turn it turn it caramel and then and and then almost black. I could even do it with this wine. And people still don't believe us. They're like, "You didn't use real orange juice. This is fake. You guys are losers." But I like the video and it is one of our best. I have a tendency to focus on the negative commenters whenever I pick a comment. I don't know why, it's a bad habit of mine, I need to fix it, but it's because a lot of them are just so funny and ridiculous. So the next video in this top 10 list, I will make sure I focus on a positive comment, but for this one, it's gonna be negative. So, you two tards are fucking stupid. That's not even real orange juice. You dumb bastards, it's another sugary drink. Look on the back of the label, what does it say? Does it have a shit ton of sugar? Yes, okay, then you've debunked nothing from Phoenix73662. Oh, Phoenix, 
We proved that any sugary liquid, when boiled for long enough, reduces and then caramelizes because of its sugar content. And no, that orange juice did not contain added sugar. It was 100% orange juice from concentrate. And it would have done almost the same thing with freshly squeezed orange juice, unless the concentration of sugar in that freshly squeezed orange juice was less than in the concentrate, in which case it would produce less gunk at the end. Moving on to the next video. Hi, my name is Jonathan. And I'm Davison, and I have no idea what we're about to do, but it's about to disrespect the cultural and restaurant institution that is Starbucks. Really? I thought we were just making a pumpkin spice latte that was going to taste good. Welcome to Rego with This. Um, today, we are going to be making a pumpkin spice latte. A so, rip-off one. So to begin, we're going to start by adding some coffee. We're going to put the coffee into this thing. You need to put this much, exactly this much. Uh, okay. I don't know if this I thought it was espresso, but if you want to do the poor man, poor hipster version of the Who has an spice espresso la latte, machine? you just add some strong coffee to a cup. And that looks like about three ounces, which would be really strong. If it was espresso, that'd be a triple shot. And then uh, you're adding cold milk? You're not going to steam that milk, Jonathan? I don't have a steamer. Now, you use this thing, which is a frother, and put it in here, and I did it! Right? Oh, that's cool. But that thing is more expensive than a pumpkin spice latte. How much you spend on that little Actually, it's like $2. <laughs> okay, wait, there's too much. We have to get rid of a little... Mm-hmm. That, that's just like cold milk. That's what they do at <laughs> actual Starbucks. Starbucks. They... Okay, yeah. As you can see, it's making foam. So instead of steaming milk, ah! should the milk be hot, Jonathan? <laughs> Probably. Um, so this is like it's gonna be like an one iced. Of the iced. So then you put in cinnamon. How much? Lots, lots, much. Come on. Do you know that cinnamon can regulate your blood blood sugar? Perfect. And uh, it's sweet. Um, too much cinnamon actually goes toxic to your liver. The more you no. <coughs> then you put nutmeg in. It's also toxic to your. <coughs> and then you put cloves. And then you use the spinner. So thing. those are your warming spices. Whoa! What? What? Why does it go so high? Okay. All right. Are you high, Jonathan? No. Although nutmeg is actually... Yeah, nutmeg can make you hallucinate. Kids, don't consume an entire giant bag. Do it. No. Don't consume okay. an entire oh, wait, giant bag. Sugar too. Uh, nutmeg, you will hallucinate. You'll also probably vomit and shit profusely. So if you're okay with shitting so that you can hallucinate that Mickey Mouse just visited you at Oh, Starbucks, wow, that was a lot of... Or that this actually tastes like a pumpkin spice la latte, you go right ahead. That feels... <laughs> A spoon was <laughs> Are you gonna electrocute yourself with that? I would love to no, see that. No, it's battery powered. It's okay. It's only 1.5 volts. Okay, let's see. I think it's done. Oh. Um, that actually tastes good. You didn't try out your recipe before telling the whole world that we were gonna stick it to Starbucks and mm. show everyone that all you need to do is to add these spices with sugar and hot milk to coffee to get a pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, that's good. This tastes like pumpkin pie in a cup. There you go. Well, loose flash. Pumpkin spice lattes don't contain actual pumpkin. So just because this made... is the shitty ghetto version. Would you like to try some? You, you've got your lips all over this. I guess I ain't You can try the other side. And? It really does taste like a pumpkin spice latte. You may yeah. want a little heavy on the cloves, but um, it's all good. So you want to know how to make one? Get yourself some nutmeg, some cloves, and some cinnamon. And yeah. you freaking don't buy this shit. You just get a spoon and stir it. I'm done. Done. I'm done. All we need is a, a Starbucks cup to make the whole like thing complete. Pumpkin spice latte. Latte. We're latte. Oh, I well, get If you it. want to buy one from us, we'll we'll charge you. We'll give you a deal. I'll give you a deal. We'll only charge you three bucks. Hey, we should go into the pumpkin spice latte business. We're poor enough here on Rigo this much. Well. Yeah, but we'll, plus shipping, I guess. Rico, this. So this was Jonathan's idea. He wanted to guesstimate making a pumpkin spice latte. 
Clearly 2014 was also the year of the pumpkin spice latte phenomenon, it being mainstream, all the jokes about, oh, white girls with their pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin spice everything and candles and douches and tampons, you know, it's, which is actually quite hilarious. So Jonathan has a channel called Just Eyeball It, and he likes to guesstimate what goes into cooking, say, I don't know, cakes, and he eyeballs everything and he sees how it turns out. So he wanted to bring that to Regoat This. So the comment I'm gonna feature is from 13 Baby Bree, and her name's Brianna, and she's now my friend on Facebook, and she said, I might actually have to try this. Thank you for watching us. We appreciate everyone, actually, that's been watching this channel and watching us grow. I think we're almost at 700 subscribers, and that's pretty good for, I guess, six or seven months of hard work. It's certainly the fastest growing channel I've ever made on YouTube, and every year I suppose I create things on YouTube, it's only gonna get easier and easier, sort of, though it is punishing. It's very, it's very hard producing as much content as we do and as we have. Like, I am probably going to take a long break over the holiday season and really, think about what I want to do for next year and commit to it, commit to a schedule. So maybe I need to kick off the air with a pumpkin spice latte so I have the energy necessary to make more awesome videos. So speaking of having energy, the next video that I'm gonna show you took a lot of energy to produce. It's our 50 Shades of Grey parody trailer and oh my God, it took us weeks, weeks to produce because we had to shoot every single little scene because we recreated the first trailer scene by scene and did a role reversal in it and um i did the editing and it took oh my god like 50 hours of editing and you'll watch it and be like really that took like 50 hours yes yes it really did to get the timing right i also did the singing so when you hear uh the your love's got me cleaning so crazy right now that's me singing and i had to remove the vocals from the original music so that was also time consuming my only regret is that i didn't make the lighting better in the final edit but i learned to edit in final cut for the first time this year and i wasn't as experienced back then as i am now this video was actually a really good teaching moment for me because i had to do so many transitions and cuts and effects that i learn more about Final Cut. So if I could go back, I would make the levels brighter. Uh, I would also call this Fifty Shades of Grey the clean version instead of making a joke about it being about interns. That was the joke at the end. But um, overall, we're really happy with it. We got a lot of compliments about it on Facebook, but it didn't do as well as we were hoping. So I don't know, sometimes I think, should I pull this down and then re-upload it right before Fifty Shades gets released in February? Because Fifty Shades is coming out February the, the uh, 14th of 2015. So I might just do that because, um, yeah, I, I think the video, given how much work went into it, deserves more views than it got. We, didn't, we certainly didn't make any money off this one. So enjoy it. And uh, yeah, you get to see me be like a dominatrix. So this is just an interview for a job. I just have a couple of questions. What was she like? She was polite, intense, smart, really intimidating. Outside work. What about you? I'd like to know more about you. There's really not much to know about me. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I am. To what do you owe your success? I exercise control in all things, Mr. Steele. You must be really boring. I'm incapable of leaving you alone. Then don't. I had a little start in life. You should steer clear of me. I don't do romance. My tastes are very singular. You wouldn't understand. Enlighten me. I just...
just wanted to be an intern. This. So the featured comment is from Bagdig Ballion, and Bagdig is the founder of What's Up Montreal, which profiles events and things around Montreal. And as well, he created the Montreal Urban Race, which is a television show on a local television station that Jonathan and I were a part of. And I can't tell you how that ends, but we got onto the show. Bagdig also organizes YouTube meet meetups in um, Montreal. So he wrote, haha, this was so funny. Love how you guys use the cleaning supplies, and that's Swiffer. And he wrote Swiffer, S-W-E-F-E-R, instead of Swiffer, S-W-I-F-F-E-R, which I think is cute. It's Swiffer, bag dig, not Swiffer. But he's always been a loyal fan and supporter, and he does great things. So if you are a Montreal YouTuber, make sure, sure you join the Montreal YouTube meetup group. Um, and uh, that's that. Oh, so this one's gonna be a quick one. I loved making this one. It was a one take wonder shot with this iPhone. And I was pretending to be Sam Pepper crying. I don't want to get too much into the scandal, but this year a YouTuber called Sam Pepper who does pranks pinched women's bums without their consent and then tried to pretend it was all consensual after the fact and that it was just a social experiment and he created more problems for himself by releasing multi multiple videos instead of just saying, hey guys, I did something wrong, I'm sorry. So somebody had found an old vlog of his where he cries and tried to make it out like he was crying after this whole pinching bum scandal and everyone getting his videos taken down but it was really just a clever edit so i parodied that clever edit and pretended to be sam pepper i know you're watching this video right now and you're thinking sam pepper why i you <laughs> It's just been a very hard time for me lately. <laughs> Ever since you took my YouTube fame away. <laughs> That's all I got because I got a tiny willy. Oh, I feel terrible that people can't still like me when I sexually assault people. What kind of a world? Is a bloke living in if he can't just touch women like they're objects or they're fuckbirds. I mean, it's not fair. It used to be like that in the Middle Ages. Why can't it be like that? No! Rico, this. So the comments I of course got were, you're ugly. Well, come on, shooting myself like this with a fake wig, with stick in my hand, my girls, right? It's, it's like that whole importance of angles. When you take a photograph, uh, a girl can look really pretty, you know, here and here, we all do, well lit. Or if, you know, it's from underneath and you're like, of course you're gonna look bad. Uh, but most people were pretty positive and Joseph, Hi wrote, LOL this vid made me laugh my ass off then I compared it to Sam Pepper's vid of him crying you did spot on. Well thank you very much, that was my intention and I'm proud of this. So we're gonna segue into though, more serious topic about sexual harassment pranksters on YouTube. There's a lot of channels that basically generate views through controversy and through doing socially inappropriate things, which are sexual in nature. And so Jonathan and I, after the whole Sam Pepper scandal, decided to speak out about these channels. Who are you? You're very pretty. Okay, can you get the away from me? We wanted to discuss a disturbing trend on YouTube, which is the increased prevalence of sexual assault and harassment pranksters. And what sexual assault and harassment pranksters are, are pranksters that go up to women or people in public places and harass them in order to create videos that then become quite popular because there's a large audience for people doing shocking and inappropriate things. And we are calling for this to stop. In our opinion, some of the notable sexual assault and harassment pranksters are Whatever, Vitaly, Simple Pickup, Ross Creations, Sam Pepper, 
and the Janoskians. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> I think I'll, make, I'll, break your, I'll break your back, so... No, you would One of the most disturbing things with these videos is that the participants do not give consent before being pranked. And that's the biggest problem. That's why it's harassment and assault. Because assault occurs when you do something to someone without their consent and against their body. You know where the Apple shop is? I was um, looking for it. I, I, think it's, I think it's down there. Let me, let me see that tattoo. Oh, that's a really nice tattoo. We suppose this is a call to YouTube and the community to do something about this. Currently, there are no systems on the platform to flag specifically sexual harassment or sexual assault, and that needs to change. Uh, I just thought you were really cute, and I want to know if you wanted to have sex. Uh, no. No? Okay. That's quite rude. And why we want to talk about this too is because we think that YouTube in enabling this and in not doing anything about it is condoning it and that perpetuates a culture of negativity and harassment towards women. It's a beautiful day, Anna. And especially you. <laughs> Would that be weird if I show you something? Come here, look. Just <laughs> What? Just look at it. Are you going to vote? No. I'm in a good mood. Look. Come here. <laughs> I would just no. At the same time, we'd like to congratulate everyone for doing something about the most recent Sam Pepper video, where he went up to women and pinched their butts without their consent. This video has been taken down. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were my mom. We use some chemical, chemical X, I think, and... You sound like you have a penis in your mouth right now. You saw the videos that we just showed from all of these channels, and you can clearly see that the men stalk the women, touch the women, kiss the women, and insult the women in degrading and harassing ways. Hey, how are you? Do I know you? No. Oh. <laughs> because you're really cute. As a woman who has been touched inappropriately, I, I don't understand why it's allowed on YouTube. And as a man, it's just embarrassing and downright degrading to see that other men are acting in such a shameful way. And it makes it worse that they're doing it for their own commercial gain. They're setting up a prank specifically in order to profit off of the misery and discomfort of other people. Sexual assault is wrong whether you're a man or a woman or anyone in between, and that sort of media should not be permitted on YouTube. Share this video in order to encourage YouTube to take a strong stance against sexual assault and harassment pranksters. Sorry, uh, do you know which uh, train I should take to go to the city? Because uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not from Sweden. Uh, uh, train to where? Yeah, just uh, to the city. Uh, do you know which, which... Did you touch my ass? No. I'm, I'm just asking. No. Yeah, so the comment that I'm going to feature is by YouTuber Dan Brown or Pogo Bad. He wrote, "Thank you for speaking out about this. Absolutely disgusting. Thank you, Dan, for being sensible and reasonable. Because a lot of people aren't. Because a lot of other comments are, you guys are fucking losers. Ha ha ha. These are some of the biggest channels on YouTube, and you can't do fuck about it. It's not a prank if you ask for their consent." And for your information, victims agree to have their video be published on YouTube after they've pranked them or they would not show the footage. Moron! No. No, that is not always the case. These pranksters do not always ask for permission. And sometimes people will say yes after the fact, even after they've been victimized. So you can do something about things that are wrong in this world by speaking up and making videos that rally people to come together to push for change. So. Not listening to you haters about that noise. Speaking of noise, I love my segues. This is hilarious. This is the video I believe that has the most views on our channel at Please let me look really fast. I hate when I keep people waiting because you've been watching for so long. This is probably the longest you've ever watched just in a row, which is amazing. Long form content is just so rare on this channel. So yeah, it's definitely our most viewed video at 150,835 views. Victory! And it's a parody 
Uh, Britney Spears leaked non-autotuned version of her song, which never really did well ultimately in 2014, called Alien. So why this video is 150,000 views is because I noticed that the leaked track kept getting pulled down via copyright complaints on YouTube, probably by Britney Spears' label. So I was like, oh my God, I have to pretend to be Britney Spears. This is hilarious. And I've sung a lot of Britney Spears karaoke. So I know I can sound a little bit like her, but I could easily sound like her doing a terrible job. So that's what I did. There was time when I was lost and found When it was just me alone to be found I was lonely Like an alien I tried but I never figured it out Why I always felt like a stranger in the crowd Oh, that was an alien Oh, 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 not alone, not alone. Record this. What I loved about the reactions to this was that I actually had people convinced it was real, but it was absolutely fake. And uh, I'll feature the comment from Graceful Danny. I completely lost my shit at 46 seconds. Surely this isn't for real. And then somebody replied to him, did you lose it gracefully? Uh, but uh, yeah, the people that got that it was a joke thought it was hilarious, but people who were looking for the real leaked version of her singing without autotune were, were I guess, disappointed. But uh, I was happy with that video and I want us to have more victories like that. It's really hard to get 150,000 views on YouTube. Really hard. So, yay. Fist bump, we did it, goats. We go this cheer. Yeah, we go this. Speaking of how hard it is to make it on YouTube, the next video is me and Jonathan attempting to illustrate how much everyday items cost in YouTube views. Ad rates are still not amazing on YouTube. They, they can be okay, but until you get into the millions of views a month, you're not making that much money. And we still only make a very modest income on this channel, but it's always rising. And the good thing is I'm also a Yahoo video publisher. So the trending media that we report on here works generally really well on Yahoo. So between those two things, plus our other channels, you know, we are making minimum wage as creators. So enjoy this and sort of think of this the next time you're like, whoa, why aren't your videos better or, or higher budget? Well, it's because, you know, it doesn't always pay to make higher budget content, unfortunately, on YouTube. To give you an idea of how hard it is to make money on YouTube, we wanted to show you how much everything costs in views.
record this. Ironically, the views video we only made like 30 cents from, not even, which is sad as frickin' hell, but totally predictable because nobody's really looking for how many YouTube views does it cost, right? Nobody's searching for this, so even if we're making good points, nobody really cares, unfortunately. So our friend Dan from Truth Mashup, he left us a comment and he does Canadian political commentary and social commentary videos. He wrote, this is a great idea. You guys are being generous to YouTube with your estimates for us. It's about $85 per 30,000 views. So uh, 30,000 views would be my internet bill for the month. A bus pass in Toronto for a month is $120. It's hard out there for YouTuber, but I do think it's time for more transparency and better payouts for YouTubers, which I agree with, but it's gonna take YouTube convincing advertisers that they should pay television ad rates and to maybe stop with the little banner click thing and just enable pre-rolls across the site. As somebody who creates for YouTube, I would like to make less content and do higher quality stuff. But the problem is I kind of know, given how many videos I've produced, that it doesn't necessarily pay to, which is sad. So we'll see though, I'm still gonna meditate over the holidays, yet. Whoa, <laughs> I just spilled it. Yay, cheers guys. Uh, so this is number 10. This is a video that I think deserves way more views than it got. It's totally inappropriate, but my dirty sense of humor is fully reflected in it. It's me doing some Alex from Target, which was also a huge moment in 2014, erotic fan fiction. So within like a day of Alex from Target trending on Twitter and all the fan girls going nuts over how cute he was in his red Target shirt scanning the items, um, somebody had already written sexy stories about him because that is what enables superstardom of young, attractive men is horny teenage girls. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed making it and it, only has a couple thousand views and it deserves more. So we're gonna end on that. The Alex from Target tampon story. I walk slowly up to the register with my load of tampons in my arms. As I reach the register, there's a sex god with flippy, dippy hair that is luscious and I feel as if I could just braid it into cornrows. I find my arm reaching up to brush it, and he just grabs the tampons and scans them. I pull out an electric vagina massager from my basket and hand it to him while biting my lip. Are you okay? Your lip is bleeding a lot, the majestic creature named Alex says. No, that's my vagina, I say confused because I'm also on my period. He backs away slowly and starts scanning my items. I suddenly try to touch his flippy, dipply, clippy, nippy, tippy, whippy hair. Yum, yum, I thought to myself. I could see myself patting his pubes, which would be identical with his hair. Would you fuck me right in the pussy? The words fall out of my mouth like the hair falls out of his scalp. I could tell by the way he rang up my duct tape, rope, lube, gag, and other things that he would be a great life partner. The way his khakis glimmered in the fluorescent store lights made my butthole tense at the thought. He never responded to my question, which was if he would fuck me right in the body. That saddens me, like when I think about how my pet dog, Boner, got hit by a potato that was flying around my room before he came. Excuse the mess it made. So are you married? Are you ready to start a family? Are you in the market looking for new young Christian singles? I ask, curious. No. Actually, I have a wife and three kids. Alex responded. Bitch, I don't care. You and Finna hop on this pussy and ride it like that ambulance. You'll be riding later because I rode your dick so fucking hard. I holler at him and shake my busty, wusty, trusty, musty ass. This has been an Alex from Target fanfic. Fuck me right in the pussy. <laughs> Record this. 
So my favorite comment is from Ria Charda, and he wrote, some women are hella thirsty. And I replied, that's because they want to be fought right in the pussy. Which is what I had said in that video. So yay, we're ending on a high note. Wow, I can't believe how much work we did this year. This is really making me reflect on how much hard work I've done on YouTube this year. This is just one of my channels, okay guys? So I've really committed to being a YouTube host and content producer, and it can only get better next year. And I hope to bring you better content, and I hope you enjoyed everything we've done for you so far on Regotis, and thank you so much for subscribing and being part of our journey. And, um, I'm happy that we have this opportunity to share our creations with the world and to create professionally. And thank you so much for that. And Merry Christmas. Happy May Edit 2014. Cheers. May all your dreams come true. This is a special issue of Regoat This where we show you the complete circle rainbow around the entire sun. Check that out. Jonathan, come to my left. Hey, it's called a corona, like the beer. Corona, what does it mean? A crown? Uh, yeah, basically. So, but what does the crown mean other than God is like with us and like we're blessed or whatever, it's or maybe a, not a cloud is forming. A cloud is forming. Okay. Yeah, right there. So a cloud is forming above my, but no, it feels like this means that we're, we're going to be successful at everything. Because well, I mean, that's, this. that's cool too, but really there's a cloud forming in front of the sun. But look at that guys. Look at, it's amazing. But there, there keeps being clouds forming in front of the sun in my You have trail. to put your head in front of it. Otherwise they can't see. No, really? Yeah in front of the sun, otherwise okay. the exposure's uh, wrong. Can you hold it down so we can get the full circle yeah. without seeing the, wait, okay. you gotta get out. Yeah, there Bye. we go.